The next, which is a very interesting talk, because I did speak in a debate on it in Coimbatore, and I want Deep Goyal, who is uh, uh, chief of uh, surgery at uh, uh, BL Max Hospital in Delhi, he's an old friend of mine, he's always been interested in colorectal surgery, and he is a, a wonderful, a gifted surgeon, and he is going to speak on uh, APR versus interesting resection. Uh, Deep. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, so first comment, I would agree with Dr. Rabesh Adnari completely that we should not fall into the trap that patient, most of our patients working in a, you know, uh, super specialty hospitals are basically coming from outside. And whether we like it or we don't like it, they are carrying a PET scan as a first investigation after colonoscopy and biopsy being done. But as Dr. Ramesh said, do not be, you know, fall in the trap do an MRI. Believe me, most of the times you will change your strategy. So with that, I will. Okay. So rectal cancer treatment has changed to multidisciplinary approach in last two or three decades. And we are actually not far. In fact, we are there when AI and the genomic prints will empower us to offer, offer precision treatment and dictate the treatment protocols. Well, it's a million dollar question. How do we choose? Because it's a question of oncological outcomes it's a question of quality of life we have to also take into account surgeon's experience and his skills and do not undermine the patient's preference after counseling the patient and taking an informed consent coming to the first thing first we have to concentrate on accurate staging and for that there are so many investigations but surgeon's finger i would still feel is a very, very important tool to assess so many things about the tumor, CT scan to know if there's a disease in the upper abdomen and the chest, high resolution MRI at rectal protocol is the key for the local staging and that is the one which will guide us. PET CT scan indications are very, very minimal. Uh, if you are taking the patient for neoadjuvant treatment, some of the oncologists will insist to have a PET CT and obviously uh, reassessing the disease after doing new adjuvant treatment for systemic failure or systemic progression. And, and the commission uh, also plays a big role in the PET CT. Sorry, sir? The commission that they get also <laughs> plays a big role in the PET CT. So, uh, so the importance of MRI was very, very clearly demonstrated by Mercury trial conducted by Zena Brown in England. And it very clearly shows that circumferential resection margin involvement is significantly associated with not only local failure, but metastatic disease. Also, Mercury 2 trial said that, you know, by accurately staging the disease, you will avoid the over-treatment and also restaging uh, post-treatment is very, very important and MRI is the investigation of choice. So the next important question is, what are we looking in MRI? Well, I would suggest that all of us should learn how to read an MRI, but if we can't do that, at least we must know what questions to ask our radiologist. So obviously MRI will tell us about the width of the tumor, that is T1, T2, T3, length, distance from the anal verge, CRM, number of lymph nodes, involvement, EMVI, mucinous content, tumor deposits out of the uh, CRM and anterior peritoneal reflection involvement. These are all important points which will guide our further treatment. What are the implications of accurate staging? Because there are various treatment options. How do you sequence them? Do you do a new adjuvant treatment or you take the patient for upfront surgery? So what we need to do, we need to identify out of our patients who are good patients, who are bad and who are ugly because not only they will help us in guiding our treatment, but also they will give, give us an insight into how these patients are going to behave. You, you, have, you have changed the ugly and the bad. Sergio Leon was actually the ugly and Lee Van Cleef was actually the bad. But Ramesh, that's the problem of having you as a moderator. You have such a keen eye. I'm sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a joke. I know. So this was published in an editorial in Acta Oncologia where they very clearly said that good tumor in the upper rectum, mid rectum, lower rectum, their definition may change 3A, 3B according to the site and lymph node involvement if not there and CRM negative 
can be taken up for upfront surgery. There can be some difference between the philosophy uh, between Americans and Europeans, uh, but we have to see what is good for us. And when we talk about bad tumors, that is the later part of the T3 CD, and if there are positive nodes or involvement of uh, adjacent structures like vagina, then we give neoadjuvant tumor. They are classified as bad. And ugly tumor are mostly T4 plus tumors. Their uh, chances of local recurrence are up to around 50 to 100 percent. You obviously give neoadjuvant treatment. Now the question is, how does NAT help in rectal cancer management? So it downstages the tumor. It can downsize the tumor. Sometimes in a narrow pelvis, tumor is very bulky. It may not be T3, C or D tumor, but you still want to downsize the tumor to decrease the local chances, recurrence of local, uh, sorry, local recurrence and to decrease the deposit of the tumor in the surrounding area, decreasing the chance of micromets, especially if, if patient has EMVI positive and you need to maintain negative CRM margins of at least, at least one millimeter. When do we reassess the response of new adjuvant treatment? So if you look at these pictures, left side picture, there is a compromise of the intersphinctic plane as the yellow arrow is showing on the left side. And after new adjuvant treatment, that has been cleared. I'm not going because of the paucity of time into the detail of tumor regression grades. So another picture showing that free on the left side and compromise on the right side. So again, when I was coming to importance of MRI in CRM, you can see if it is positive CRM, chances of local recurrence are almost almost up to 50%. Again, depending upon what is the margin of CRM, we definitely require more than one. If it is more than two or more than five, it does not decrease the chances of local recurrence. Again, you see in this picture that CRM on the left side is less than one. So obviously this patient went for neoadjuvant treatment and at the reassess MRI or restaging MRI, it is more than one millimeter showing that neoadjuvant treatment has actually done a good job and this patient can be taken up for surgery. Another important point of debate, distal margin, how much is enough? We remember from our uh, medical school days that classically in low rectum, we used to say that we need two centimeter margin, but things have changed in the era of new adjuvant treatment. Today we are talking about, uh, we, we talked about from two centimeter to less than one centimeter. If you look at this data, uh, it very clearly shows that there's not much difference between more than one centimeter and more than two centimeter. But yes, we do not want less than one centimeter as per this report. But now as in patients where more and more favorable biology, patients who have undergone uh, new adjuvant treatment, Today, we are talking about even a margin of close to one millimeter. So in fact, if patient insists that he wants to save the sphincter, you have a patient who has undergone post new adjuvant treatment. You have a patient who has a favorable tumor biology. We can do any margin which is microscopically negative. Coming to the concept of total new adjuvant therapy, which is in last uh, couple of years is catching up. What does it mean? It means total chemotherapy and or radiation protocols are given before surgery or sandwiched in between uh, the whole treatment. It increases the complete pathological response. Some of the papers, uh, rapid trial is showing that up to 38% uh, complete response being seen uh, with total new adjuvant treatment. So what are the indications? If you have a large, bulky, ugly T4 tumors, if the number of lymph nodes are larger, number, MRF is positive, EMVI is positive, uh, you will consider these patients for TNT. Not all rectal cancer will need TNT uh, to be on record. Patients who have an intermediate grade, now there's enough evidence that even just giving chemotherapy may give you the same results or just doing only radiotherapy will give you the same results. So what are the advantages of TNT? You can give full dose of chemotherapy early in the course of the disease, which may address the micrometastasis and better tolerated by the patient. And stoma requirement for a shorter time because once you have finished all the chemotherapy, you do the surgery, you put the stoma and you can reverse the stoma within a month and some papers and some centers practice after even two weeks, they reverse the stoma. 
if you're not completing your treatment and if you're doing the surgery in between, then you will have to wait till you finish all your uh, adjuvant treatment then. And if you have chosen to do TNT and a patient has a complete response, then you can maybe selected patients after discussing with patient can be kept for watch and wait approach. Another important question is when should we assess tumor response? If we are following a classical protocol where we give a long course radiation and then we are waiting for the response, today we say that, you know, wait for uh, around 8 to 12 weeks and our in our center we normally wait for 10 weeks and then uh, reassess. But there is a lot of literature available which says that the longer you wait, the PCR rates are higher like in this uh, particular uh, paper, it is ranging from six weeks to 19 weeks. And you can see the response from 18% to 38% respectively, whether it is because of the consolidation chemotherapy or it is because of the prolonged period we have waited, it is difficult to actually ascertain. What is also important when you're taking these patients for new adjuvant treatment to know whether these patients are actually responsive or not. Because if you keep on giving uh, TNT and there is obviously 40% people who are not responding as per expectation, then probably you are losing out on the time for surgery. And it is also shown that people who wait for longer period in patients who are not responding as expected, their overall survival and disease-free survival is significantly worse. So that brings us to uh, the question that when should we reassess in these patients. Sorry for this confusion. One second. Yeah. Or can we predict a set of patients whom we think are going to be poor responders and we need to formulate a strategy where we can reassess them earlier than later? So people who are having poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma, multiple nodes, EMVI positive, large mucinous content, CRM positive or ISR positive, before starting new adjuvant treatment. These are the patients for whom we have to keep an eye and all obviously assess them early in the part of the treatment and then formulate our strategy. Local excision again is becoming popular. There are certain criteria. If tumor is less than three centimeter, involving less than 30% of the bowel circumference, and you have done an uh, endorectal ultrasound or MRI or both sometimes it's required and tumor is limited to some mucosa, no lymph node involvements, well to moderate differentiate and absence of lymphovascular perineural invasion and no mucinous or signet cell component. These are the patients who can be considered for local excision. There are various techniques available, but as far as low rectal is concerned, it is only transanal uh, strategy. There is some literature which is available which says that local recurrence rates after local excision in low rectal cancer are higher as compared to TME. But when you apply new adjuvant treatment in these patients and then do local excision, then the recurrence rate and overall rates, oncological rates are similar to TME without any uh, disadvantage of TME in form of losing the organ or in form of anterior uh, resection syndrome. Artificial intelligence is coming in a big way. And this is a very interesting article, which I could lay my hands on, where they are applying algorithm on MRI pictures uh, in, in various uh, pre-designated factors. And then they are predicting that probably this particular patient is not going to respond as expectedly by new adjuvant treatment. Interesting resection, Dr. Arun has already uh, told us in great detail. A few slides, I would say that one has to be careful about uh, functional results and oncological results because uh, the more and more aggressive you are with ISR, you really need to choose your patients very, very carefully. But if you look at the data, data says that there is no oncological disadvantage and in most set of the patient, even the functional results are as expected. And this article says that around 81.6% of the patients were satisfied with the functional results of the surgery. But the downside is that they have not taken into account different forms of ISR uh, 
sub total or total what i would say that you have to be very careful as as a surgeon that you inspect the functionality the sphincter function of that patient you have to see comorbidities you have to see age you have to see gender because in women uh, most of the times the sphincter function may not be as good as in men so you need to do uh, a proper digital rectal examination you have to have the knowledge of anatomy you need to transport your images especially the mr images to your operation room and visualize what operation are you doing what are the organs involved where is the sphincter and how are you going to cut where is the anastomosis how is the crm everything together you need to apply your mind to that particular patient you need to obviously as i said look at the health of the patient sphincter function and at the end obviously you need to have a very open discussion with the patient that what kind of functionality is the patient expecting and what does patient want obviously no patient would like to have a stoma but once you tell them and guide them properly you will be surprised that some of the patient will choose to have a permanent stoma rather than having an inadequate function watch and wait we have already said this was popularized by uh, angelita hypergama from brazil and it is now becoming more and popular in selected patients same thing so look at this picture on the left side we have a patient before new adjuvant treatment which is involving the internal sphincter and a part of the external sphincter but after new adjuvant treatment you see how the disease has restricted and it has responded very well and this has been converted to an lar if you are you cannot save the sphincter i would say today uh, treatment of choice a surgery choice is extra levator abdominal perineal excision and this is the specimen which you will see on the left side where you see the wasting and on the right side is the extra levator which is leads specimen now look at this picture how do we choose so ultra low cancer a cancer which is abutting top of the internal sphincter distal margin can be achieved highly motivated patient good sphincter function preferably male you can get away by doing intersphincter resection and avoiding a permanent stoma on the other hand if you have a patient where a sphincter is involving the levator muscle or the external sphincter major part there is a poor sphincter function the technically challenging procedure in terms of patient morbidly obese narrow pelvis or any other problem patient after being counsel uh, wants to undergo after understanding the implication and probably a female patient multi paras patient i would probably uh, do an apr so that's my presentation thank you thank you deep for a wonderful presentation i have a couple of points before we move on to the next speaker because Sir. these have to be brought in now so that people can debate it when they uh, come to a thing first of all i do not believe in shailesh kunda pegas paper it goes against every other paper in literature i spoke on intersphincter resection versus apr i spoke on the side of apr at the coimbatore uh, uh, colorectal surgeons meeting and i reviewed the literature from korea japan china everywhere the rates of complete incontinence vary between 50 to 75% and rates of partial incompetence and incompetence at night uh, with uh, soiling of uh, clothes varies uh, from 75 to 90% so it is not a good operation intersphincter resection it's a poor operation uh, to say that highly motivated patients i have gone also on to the blogs of patients who underwent intersphincter resection and they invariably curse their surgeons for not warning them what they were expecting and many of them in the usa have changed it back to an apr because they said i like to ski i like to swim with an isr i need to be near a toilet within 20 minutes because i cannot hold my motion more than that but with an apr i can be free of all this so there are a lot of disadvantages of isr which are not mentioned by the surgeons to the patient and they force them and then the patients are miserable so i did do an analysis and i came to the conclusion that if i had to have a con uh, operation i would never have an isr 
we voted the audience before the surgery. There was about 20% who said ISR and 80% who said APR for a particular case which is in the lower rectum. After the surgery, the only two people who voted for ISR were Sendhil Nathan and Rajapanian because Rajapanian spoke and they are both from Jemma Hospital. Every other person lifted his hand in favor of APR. So I was able to convince my audience. So there is a lot of things which are not said in literature. That is one point. Second point is there was one slide where you actually showed that there was good response and so you could convert it. But actually, if you looked at the slide, the CRM before surgery was less than one millimeter and after surgery was great, after radiation and chemo was greater than one millimeter. Actually, that had progressed. So that is not a good sign. Anything that progresses is not a good sign. So no, no, that it was before. Sorry, if I may make a comment on the first uh, first point which you have raised. I personally completely agree with you, sir, that ISR may not be a good choice of the procedure. But again, since we believe in literature, the today literature says, and there's a very large paper which has just come out from Tata Memorial Hospital by Saklani Group, in which very clearly mentions that their functional results are very, very good. I am sorry. I do no, not no. believe Indian functional results. I am sorry. The, but, uh, the entire results, I, I am unable to believe. The rest of the world says 80% incontinence. And these people say that we have 80% continence. How can I believe that? Everybody so, else in the world has bad results. Any paper good results. coming out from Tata Memorial Hospital have to be given. Uh, uh, no, I don't believe but, I don't but, believe but, that. I don't but believe as you that. rightly said, as a student of science, Ramesh, job, Ramesh, uh, sorry to interrupt, but let us keep the uh, yeah, sign of but, whatever no, is scientific. I am accept. saying that everybody in the world has one result and we have another result, which is so very that, surprising, which I don't believe. I have received so, patients. No, no, then, for then you, should, you should generate a scientific debate. You should yeah, do a good yeah. review of the public. I did, I did do it. I did do it. I, uh, that's what I'm saying. I did us, do the let us, debate. Let us do the discussion so, for students. Let us do the discussion. Yeah, we will do the discussion for students. But I did do a very scientific research, and I have got the figures to prove it also in my uh, somewhere in my slides. So, sir, I, I would like it. to I would like to rephrase and say that what you are saying is not wrong. But as a student of science, we have to give importance to literature. But at the same time, we should be mature enough to interpret the literature and apply it to our patient as it we think is right for the patient after a frank discussion. That's what I was trying to tell you. But, so the rest frank discussion, would, does it take? We'll go no, let me, let me, what I would say that there are so many publications, only one publication talks of 80% good results, whereas rest talk of 80% poor results. That's what you said. So it is up to me whether I want to accept that article or the rest of the literature when I am counseling my patients. That is what so, so I look I at the literature. My Sorry, yes, I look at a lot of literature, and I was looking for what Dr. Ramesh is saying, but unfortunately or fortunately, there's a huge amount of literature available which now says that functional results are comparable, which is very difficult to digest. I would agree with Dr. Ramesh. No, but, but is it is it from foreign uh, Korea? It's from foreign. Is it from Japan? Is Most it from of the literature USA? is foreren. Absolutely. So I have not found those literature. Let us, let us, let us see. keep the discussion restricted to what is going to help the students in the yeah. exam. So this okay. is a teaching session. And coming so to I, the I, point, I would say to the examining examinees that junior surgeons should, as far as possible, avoid intersphincteric resections. The results in the hands of inexperienced surgeons are going to be much worse than that of experienced surgeons. Mm -hmm. So I would say that they should. Uh, uh, Talk to them about the advantages of APR and uh, APR is not a bad act. There are many papers which show that APR is not a bad operation. And so they should stick to that. And I think once they become experienced, then they can start doing ISR. They have learned it. Then they can uh, choose the right patient and do it. Uh, that well, is my advice. Uh, yes, uh, I want to ask one question. And Dr. D, very nice presentation. I almost covered every aspect of uh, yeah. LAR and AR. But uh, um, one question from resident point of view. This most common thing that uh, these two operations are done mainly for tumors less than 5 centimeter. And uh, my question is, if there is bulky tumor and you have uh, undergone new adjuvants chemotherapy and there is a almost complete response, then how will you decide to go for LAR or APR? And interspinctic dissection is not uh, very much popular in India and uh, the functional result is not good. And from resident point of view, it's not 
uh, at this time point of time to know much about interdisciplinary research. Most important thing is to decide in bulky tumor if here it has got good uh, response after new adjuvant chemotherapy. What should be the strategy? Whether should go for APR or LAR? So, so again. Again, Dr. Well, you have to go back and we have to see whether I can achieve CRM, whether I can give you a good distal margin and without causing any compromise. And if I still have a good length distally where I can have a good functioning uh, anal canal, obviously I will go for a low anterior section. But again, as Dr. Ramesh was saying, if you are a new surgeon, you do not want to do ISR, you can't give, uh, without doing an ISR, you can't give a CRM then probably you have to discuss with your patient. And I, I would, you know, go to an extent saying that it is not necessary that you have to do an operation, though that is a practical point. But if you think somebody else can save the sphincter and give a good function and you are not the right surgeon, maybe refer that patient to, to that center. No, maybe. My question is, how will you re-stage the tumor? Because the tumor was bulky at the first. After giving oh, you mean, new so, chemotherapy, you need to... Spring. If um, you have denied, now you have to decide between the LAR and APR. In the tumor, say it is. Uh, uh, yeah, you the have. These are, the the following, these are the following investigations you have to do. You have to do a diffusion weighted MR. Because that diffusion is the weighted best. MR is not very popular in India, sir, because so most but, of the center, almost 90% yeah, of the center, but, no one is doing diffusion. Even we are good, doing we are doing in our place. Uh, uh, and that is very, very good to center. tell you. That is very good to do because it tells you whether the tumor is there or not. Still, so there are many to, papers that uh, contradicts many results of diffusion weighted MRI. But we are so still are, doing that along with a good rectal examination, multiple blind biopsies, and we do a PET scan. Now, the PET scan still highlights uh, the lower rectum. I would do an APR. If the PET scan doesn't highlight at the lower rectum, and I can get a centimeter of rectum above the elevator and I, I will do a low anterior, ultra low anterior section. But I do not believe in this intersphincteric resection and I do not advocate it to my patients. Can I make a comment, Dr. Utpal? You yes, see, yes. if you do not have a diffusion weighted MRI, do a routine high resolution MRI. So there are three categories, you know, so patient has a good response, patient has a near total response or a poor response. So the problem happens in a near total response. Poor response, you know, it's an outlier. You have okay. to do an APR. Good response, you can get away with anterior section. Problem happens with a near total response and the interpretation of a near, uh, near total response. Because sometimes what is seen as a disease is just a fibrosis or a uh, acellular mucin. So that is where the problem lies. And you definitely require uh, a very good uh, radiologist to guide you there and a digital rectal examination to see what kind of response you have. What is the mobility? What is the distal margin available? So all this will definitely guide you. And obviously, a lot of uh, maturity and experience is required to make a decision in these kind of patients. And if you find that right. there is complete response, there is no tumor on biology on uh, biopsy, there is no tumor on a uh, visualization with a colonoscope, your uh, PET scan is negative. These are patients who I would think are complete responders. And these patients, I would put on wait and watch policy. So anybody who has to lose his sphincter, I'm aggressive about wait and watch policy if they've had a complete response. We now have 13 patients uh, who have been on wait and watch policy. Only one has gone on to APR. The longest follow-up is four years at the moment. And uh, he has not, and he comes uh, for regular follow-up and we do this uh, proper uh, examination. And uh, wait and watch is also a very good policy. I think uh, we are going to see more and more of it because radiation and chemotherapy are improving so much that we are going to see more and more of it. Couple of points, couple of caution about what Dr. Ramesh is saying. It is at the moment not standard of care. You have to really discuss with the patient. The patient should be absolutely willing for a very, very strict follow-up. Yes. And, and repeated costly investigations. Yes. And yeah, that, but many it, patients it, are willing to pay for that. No, sphincter absolutely. Can be I am, what I'm saying is they should be offered to the patient. But you as a surgeon also have to look at whether this patient is likely to have a follow up with you or not. And Most especially of them, younger, them are coming, especially younger patients. Now there is a literature available that if they fail, the rate of metastasis is higher in these patients, not only local recurrence. Sir, anything uh, to do with the... Uh, there, are, there are two or three questions on the chat from students. Khalid Durrani wants to know, 
what should be the neo adjuvant protocol for tumors of the upper one third of the rectum uh, i would add to that that do you treat them as ca rectum or do you treat them as ca colon upper okay. yeah as a sorry uh, please go ahead sir uh, i treat them as ca colon so upper rectum unless is very bulky and has multiple lymph nodes or it is infiltrating the uh, anterior abdominal wall i don't give neo adjuvant treatment i will go upfront surgery and then give adjuvant treatment Deep your take on this? Absolutely, sir. Upper okay. rectal cancers are treated as a colonic cancer unless they are very very bulky, as Dr. Ramesh said. Then maybe there you will give new adjuvant chemo rather than radio. Radio, yeah, chemo. Dr. Khalid Durani also has made two comments. I will read them out. He says that it's important to highlight that procedures such as intersphincteric resection, transanal TME, they are successful in specialized high volume centers. Uh, for an average GI surgeon, probably he has put a question mark, but I think we have already covered that. Uh, that trans, uh, I just want to tell him that the transanal TME is banned at the moment in Sweden and Norway. After their uh, analysis of interim results, they found such high local recurrence that they have banned it at the moment till uh, people can get trained and do better surgery. The other comment he has made that the oncological results should take priority over functional outcome. That, that of course, is general. There is a question from Dr. Sundar Shresth. He says, he asks, what would be the surgical plan for a tumor which had involved the sphincter and now has got neoadjuvant treatment and post neoadjuvant sphincter, the sphincter is free. Now, this is a very frequent question which is always asked for all cancers following neoadjuvant treatment that what decides the extent of resection? Is it the pre-neoadjuvant uh, extent of the disease or is it the post-neoadjuvant extent of the disease? Uh, uh, can I just uh, first uh, button with my opinion? We were taught based on head and neck cancers, which were squamous cell carcinomas, that the margin of resection should remain as the original margin of the tumor. But I think we are, when we are dealing with adenocarcinomas, that concept has now changed. Adenocarcinoma seem not to come back in the areas from which it has vanished. So, if you are confident it has vanished, you can now use the new edge of the tumor to decide your line of resection. This is my opinion. I think I, I would completely agree with Dr. Ramesh. I will add that you also have to take into account the tumor biology. If this is a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma, signet ring carcinoma, a lot of mucinous content, I would be probably, you know, maybe err towards the abdominal perineal section rather than doing an ISR in these patients. No, but, but more Dave, important but is the circumferential spread. See, for Dave, example, suppose bladder was involved to begin with or you thought uh, uh, that it is involved or vagina was involved and now post new adjuvant on imaging, it appears as if there is a plane. So, do you go into that plane or do you... No, vagina is sacrificable. Bladder wall is sacrificable. Whatever is sacrificable can be sacrificed. Should be sacrificed. Should be sacrificed. Then uh, you are going by convenience rather than by any yes. principle. That yeah, what is convenient is, you resect, what is not yes. you. Uh, that yes. is that that you is, have to take into account tumor biology and have a very, very frank, informed, informed discussion with your patient. And another thing, D, totally differential carcinomas and, uh, and nuisance secreting carcinomas. They don't cause problems with their local recurrence. They cause distant metastasis and kill the patient. So even if you sacrifice, you go a centimeter, you will give him a continent thing, but he will die in two years of liver meds. So the, their response to neoadjuvant treatment is not complete most of the time. It's not good, but That's they will go for distant meds and die. Yes. They don't die of local recurrence. Right, sir. No, so what is the specific answer to the question that pre neoadjuvant sphincter was involved? In, in, Post neoadjuvant sphincter is free. Would you preserve the sphincter? Would you yes, sacrifice? Yes, I, I, I would preserve the sphincter. Discuss with the patient, sir. Give him I the would preserve. true picture My. and take his opinion. So what would you tell the patient? What exactly would you tell the patient? I will again come to the same thing, sir. If his pre neoadjuvant biopsy is well differentiated adenocarcinoma, no other high risk features, I will probably err on the side of doing an ISR. But if patient also wants that, you know, I do not want more chances of recurrence and tumor biology is not favorable, I will do an APR. Elderly well, patients, well, women should have APR because they can't control the ISR very well. So they should preferably have APR. 
elderly patient also you can add to your Uthpal, what would you do in a case like this uh, uh, sir I, I will prefer aps because okay. uh, pre uh, yeah so there are two schools of thought but there seems to be a school of thought because we have now said that neoadjuvant treatment down stages the tumor we have now got this evidence so if it down stages then we have to manage with the new stage that is my argument